as a physicist, I am here to give you a technical presentation about the future of industry. But instead of slides, I brought you this. Do you know what this is? This is my magic wand with which I'm going to take you on a journey. Well, actually, it's a piece of my fence. But um, unfortunately, I have to replace some of the wood beams in my fence, and I cannot find this color anywhere anymore. So I placed an order with a local producer. And guess what they told me? I have to wait two months until they get enough other orders to fill a complete production lot. Well, I have no choice but to wait. And while waiting, I started thinking about the production process of this beam and how it changed in time. A long time ago, in a garden far, far away, a man would have simply painted his fence whatever color he had and then waited for the sun to dry it. The first industrial revolution, the mechanization, would have replaced him with a steam-driven painting machine. Access to electrification marked the second industrial revolution and the starting point of mass production units. Now an electric oven could speed up the drying process. At the end of a line, a person would do an optical check of the product. That is, until digitalization took over and she would have been replaced by an automated inspection tool and a computer. Stop everyone, we have an error. The paint is not dry yet. What happened? Painter, dryer, inspector. Why didn't we notice earlier that the paint is wet? Can we save the product? In order to be able to answer his question, we must first look at what data is available. Well, I can only tell you how much paint I used. And I can give you the temperature and the drying time. Well, if you put another inspection before the drying process, then we can check the thickness of the paint layer, and then we can adjust the drying time. But that's another step in the process. Yes. It's more expensive, and it slows down the production. So no way! Well, we must deal without an early warning system. But at least we can save the product by placing it some extra time in the oven. But which product? We don't know when the problem started or if it is fixed by now. So we must blindly place all the products from the last day again in the oven. In real life, my colleagues here would be robots but the rest of the production would be just as described. So, what comes next? Next comes the smart factory. Today we are in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution driven by connectivity. Humans and companies are already connected, but now the Internet of Things connects machines, sensors, products and services. But what does that mean? What makes a factory smart? The answer is data, big data. So let's look at what data is still hidden in our line here. Well, I could tell you which color tube and which brush I used so you can check whether I'm using the right ones. But if you give me an accelerometer like this one, I can tell you how fast I brush because the speed of my brush influences directly the thickness of the paint layer. I could also tell you whether my arm starts to tremble, meaning that you can put me in maintenance before I start, start producing scrap. I can also tell you whether my brush gets stuck on something, meaning that this piece of wood is of bad quality. So we can simply throw it away before putting it in the oven. I could also tell you whether I dropped too much paint, so the oven can adjust its temperature, or it can simply dry that one piece a little bit longer. I can give you the temperature and the drying time, but if I have a humidity sensor like this, I wouldn't need a fixed time to dry. I could just be set up to dry each piece until there is no more humidity in the air. So it wouldn't matter if the painter starts working badly. I'll compensate this for a while. Wow, now if we have so much data, and this data is within the specified limits, then I don't need to check each and every single piece again. Actually, I could take a break and just come back later. 
So, to be able to combine the data, we must first implement a big data environment and create an intelligent network along the entire value stream. This would open up completely new possibilities, like, for example, putting an RFID tag on the wood plank. That will allow the painter to read exactly what material comes in and how it wants to be processed, meaning by which color and which brush. It would also tell the oven how long it needs to dry this specific piece. Making a wood plank smart like this would enable the line to produce each piece individually and not in big batches. And I wouldn't have to wait two months to get my order. Oh, I ran out of materials. Let's have a break then. I suggest an oil change. Okay. If we would have combined... <laughs> if we would have combined early enough the manufacturing data with the logistics data, we could have reduced our stock, but still optimize our resource management on something like this. Wouldn't happen. Let's think of something else. What about augmented reality? Technicians could use it to fix problems faster but it could also be used to guide operators through the line or for training purposes. Also, completely new services uh, will arise. Like, for example, going from preventive maintenance, where you would check the painter every day to see if he's okay or not, to predictive maintenance, where you would only check him if a certain pattern appears in his data. Like, for example, if his brush starts going slowly. Thus, you would reduce your downtime caused by maintenance. There are a lot of new ways to become more effective and personalize products. All you need to do is get your data, understand it, analyze it, and I'm afraid, yes, there you will need mathematics, and then use your creativity. There is actually no way around this fourth industrial revolution, because it's already here. The data has been available for a while now. But now, with the development of big data environments, we actually have the tools to use it. It is the only way to stay competitive and keep manufacturing in high-cost locations such as Europe or the US. It will allow companies to become more effective and green, reduce their costs while still delivering high quality. Do you think products will become cheaper? Not really. But getting personalized products, like my fans here, will become much easier. And while the number of human operators will decrease, this is a trend that started long ago, there will be new opportunities for engineers, and their creativity will drive the innovation process even farther. This is not just the future of industry. It is the future of the products we buy and of the services we use. This is Industry 4.0.